welcome back. I have a, another fun landscape for you today. So I have a 18 by 36 inch canvas that I have painted the edges with a warm copper color. And I am planning on doing kind of half earth, half sky with the sky being a very late in the sunset sort of sunset where it's kind of dark and you have a lot of those really pretty purples going on and stuff like that. So yeah, that's the plan today. Nothing too complicated. I will bring you down, show you my paints, and we'll get going. Okay, we have our colors here. I have a purple mix that's just odd and, odds and ends from other cups. I have Treasure Gold, Fire Opal, amazing color. Quinacrinone Burnt Orange from Golden's. This is also some drips left over. There's a bunch of warm copper in there though from Rust-Oleum. I have uh, Mink from Folk Art. Rich Espresso. I think that's also from Folk Art with a little bit of Burnt Umber. From Treasure Gold, I have their Purple Copper, which is amazing. I think it's called Antique Copper. Iridescent Gold from Goldens. I have some ready-to-use uh, acrylic pouring paint from Mixed Media Girl, Cause Earth Shimmer. And then in these three cups, these are all mixed with Amsterdam's pouring medium, which gives some crazy cell effects. And this is Payne's Gray from Golden's. I have Carbon Black from Golden's and Iridescent, also from Golden's. Okay, and then I have a bunch of paper towels ready. If I decide to do some swiping, I'll spray those with my water. And then for my flip and drags, I've just got some old use cups that I've let dry and are perfect for reusing for these sorts of, of pours. Okay, there we go. I'm going to start off on the earth part first, I think. So, some nice brown. I'm going to try this uh, Cause Earth Shimmer. Pretty kind of reddish copper color. Very nice. A little bit of the purple, I think. A little of the mink. Mink pearl, I think that's called. More of the brown. Get some of this uh, drips I have saved. Get a little bit of gold in there. And some more brown.
but I'm going to do my sunset sky portion first and then reevaluate kind of the whole piece as uh, the piece as a whole. I'm going to start with a little bit of these uh, copper drips. And then some of the burnt orange. Some of the mink pearl. Some of the fire opal. Bit of this purple, I think. And do a little bit of the gold that has the Amsterdam in it. And do more of the burnt orange. The copper. I think I'm going to add just a little bit of the black also. Let's do that again. That is gorgeous. earthy colors off of the table, the drips. There we go. And I just want to start by cleaning up this uh, skyline a little bit. There we go. And I don't want it to be really, really straight because horizons are very rarely even appear to be straight. my palette knife and I think I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is load it up kind of like you would a cell activator for bloom and I've got my black here let me kind of just see what that does a little bit just kind of 
bring some interesting points in. Yeah. Ooh. That's doing some interesting stuff. Um, so this time what I'm doing is I'm loading the paper towel with a little bit of water. I'm going to take a little bit of that black cell activator. I'm going to just kind of come in here with a point and then slowly bring that down back up just so it doesn't look quite so like there's one swoop through there just kind of breaking that up a little bit I think I'm going to bring in some highlights with the gold. Ooh, well, there's one. <laughs> A little drip, but that's okay. Just kind of some little highlights. Sometimes at the top of the hill at sunset, you'll get that little kind of golden glow. Bring one of my little tiny thin little pieces of paper in. Get a little little damp. Just pulling up some moisture off another paper. That. One of those things, it's just kind of subtle, but I think it adds some interest. Same thing with this brown in a couple of places. Okay, I think I am really, really happy with this. I am going to clean up my edges. And when I say that, what I mean is I'm going to just run my, uh, run a stir stick under the bottom so that it cuts off any drips that are coming down so that my composition stays mostly how it is and doesn't continue to pull off of the canvas, which those drips will kind of continue to flow if you let them. So. I'm going to do that. I'll bring you in for a wet walkthrough. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me.
Okay, so I am really happy with how this dried. It's a really beautiful piece and there's lots of uh, gorgeous parts to it. The only thing I don't like is that there isn't as much of a distinction between the land and sky part as I would like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little experiment and I have a, a structure paste or a, uh, sorry, a texture paste that is translucent and I have some uh, Bokuda Brown eye candy pigment. So I'm gonna mix these two together and I'm going to paint a little bit of a horizon line to give some textural and visual variation between the sky and earth. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so I have my texture paste all mixed up. Hope you can see that. And I'm going to use a combination of my stick and I've got a couple of soft uh, brushes here and I'm going to kind of vary how thick and thin it is. Here we are with the final dry video walkthrough. I just wanted to show you some of the details here. I love how this texture turned out. And look at some of the details in the sky. It really is just stunning. That's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for joining me today.